Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Scream Queens Season 2, Episode 8. It's called Rapunzel, Rapunzel, full spoilers for the episode, as always. I'll tell you what, I did not expect Gracie's dad, Wes, to come back. <laughs> no, and I like how they address the fact that no one's mentioned no her one's mentioned all her. season. No one's mentioned Grace, this is the first time they've mentioned it, and he's pissed that they've not mentioned it. He's like, <laughs> so what have you heard about my daughter? I was even surprised that Chamberlain was like, oh, I've heard this. I'm like, did you? When? Yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> when he goes, oh, it's nice of you to ask about her. I was like, oh yeah, that was like to the viewers, it was like... <laughs> Yeah, we don't care enough to ask about her either. And it's funny, because Zadie has been the, the straight man this season, and I actually thought they gave her more character in this episode than we'd seen from her. Like, she had a little bit towards the start where she was doing, like, her... Uh, I can't remember what she called it, but she was, like, doing, she was filming on her phone, and she was doing, like, you know, Zadie's thing the of gag. the day. Gag, yeah. Um, I was like, man, this is actually more character than she's had before. I think the Chanel's are rubbing off on her. Uh, especially when she said... Uh, uh, goodbye Zodiacs, which I thought was particularly amusing. Uh, oh, that was good. Yeah, that was good. No, I, she, she grew up. I mean, it was like, you gave her something funny to do, and I was like, oh, it was... Yeah. Which probably means, no, the r- rules are, oh, character, incoming death. Not for her, though. No, no, no. <laughs> not yet. Not, well, not yet. Yeah, but she, she's annoyed at Chamberlain because he keeps texting. She's been too keen. And Chanel's great plan is to lock, his, or lock her number on his phone so he can only respond after 9pm. He can't see that it's her all day. And this comes out to play later because he can't contact Part of me wants to ask, can you even do this? And if so, how the hell do you do it that quick? And then I realised, why bring logic into it? Someone even brings that up in this episode. Exactly. Why, don't, don't dare bring logic into this conversation. Ex- exactly. What's the point of logic in this show? The, she does it so quickly, that is ridiculous. I, I mean, I imagine there probably is an app for it. There's, yeah, there's probably a way to do this. I feel like it's not that far fetched. Even and even if it doesn't exist, someone could do it. Someone could like yeah, yeah. I'm program sure there's it. an app for it. Yeah, but, but I was like, but even if, even if there isn't, I mean, no, I'm sure like someone who makes apps could do it relatively yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's not that complicated yeah. task, is it? No, it's, I was just more like, enough. okay, Chanel, I get you're good with phones, but geez. Oh, Chanel was cracking me up this episode repeatedly. Mm. Oh my. god. God, um, not knowing what Vietnam or the Korean War war was, uh, saying she'd been listening to the oldies and that she'd discovered Blink-182, Smash Mouth and Chawamba Wamba. <laughs> oh, that got me good. And that was really... Because it's not like she's, she's... She's 24. She's like, what, your age and a couple of years younger than me? She's a little bit older than me. Oh, yeah, you're like, what, 22? 22, yeah. yeah. So... It's not even like she's a completely different generation, but all kind of part of the same Yeah, those are the ones group. that she should know. Yeah, that's the ones she should know, which is why that was really funny, because she's like, oh, I discovered Blake 182. It's like, well, first of all, they're still around. It's not like, like, they're all too, sure enough, they kind of faded into nothingness, sure. But Blake 182 are still a thing. Yeah, and Smash Mouth have Shrek. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of keeps them around. But uh, that 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 line cracked me up. Everything about her trying to connect with his past, <laughs> and assuming that he was alive during like the end of World War Two. Yeah, and oh man, the whole thing about just not getting mash. Yeah, not get one of the greatest shows of all time. No, I think you mean Boy Meets Girl. <laughs> but... Corey and Topanga, the greatest love story of all time. Which, by the way, that show was on at the exact same time as. Smash Mouth and Blink One Eight Two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was the exact same time period. So, come on, Chanel. <laughs> maybe maybe I don't know. look. Stop it. You're bringing logic into it. I know. I know. But it's just oh, it cracks me up. And I, that may be my new favorite thing, by the way, just to describe the show. Just stop, stop it bringing with logic. logic into it. And it's from a character who's it's like you know it's the the mother of the killer. It's it's not even like a important character that we care about. But <laughs> yeah. she, she said that line, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's what that's yeah. how you should look at this show. Exactly. Oh, but no, um, even even Chanel's whole thing about uh, I don't have to be good in bed, I'm hot, I, I can just lie here. Ah, uh, good. And then still being offended when he yells out their own name. Oh, so good. <laughs> and then just goes, eh, I'll just put Spotify on. Do you know what I love about that? Though? Cause it's funny, because I'd forgotten what her first name was until they mentioned it repeatedly this episode. So afterwards, like, Kat, is that even her first name? I'm like, that's kind of funny, because if you'd asked me before this episode, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you what her first name was, so... Yeah. Good. Yeah. Dean Munch. Uh, yeah. So Wes is back. He's got a hair tip. By the way, I cringed so hard. See when it, see when he's explaining what he did, and it cuts back to him pulling out the hair. It's a close up. 
if it come yeah. out of his head. Yeah. And then I'm slowly eating that. That whole thing was making me want to gag. It was unpleasant. I, yes. I don't. Uh, no. Yeah. No. No. I, and I'm not squeamish about most things, but that was disgusting. It was yes, not nice. That was disgusting. It's one of the most gruesome things this show has done. Needles aside. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no. This is more the, universally gruesome. Yeah, the needles are only if you've got a problem with needles. I, I don't have a problem with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, no, no. It was, no, it was, it was actually a really good episode, which is surprising because Chanel's number three and five were mostly uh, yeah, sidelined. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're in the scene where Chamberlain's asking for them advice, which, by the way, I love that Chamberlain goes to the three Chanel's for advice about this. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the, the, the one little moment that I, I really liked with uh, them was Chanel number three being the only one who's like, I'd love if a guy texted me that often. Or, at all. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I like that. And um, Both of them act, like, try to, like, inch away from Chanel number six when Chanel number six was coming up with plans. It, yeah. yeah. And I also liked it when they, when they were asking fives, like, wait, why haven't you had this thing with the hair? This This seems like something you'd do. Oh, that was a good joke, actually. Yeah. That, was a, that was a good guy. Uh, but no, West coming back was such a surprise. Like, see, when they walked in and he just turned, I was like, ah, oh, I did not see them going there. It took me a second. I was like, I'm pretty sure that was Grace's dad. I was like, yeah. But then I, was, and then, and then I just kind of went, nah, I must be misremembering. And then I was like, oh, it is him. Yeah. It's yeah. all right. Do you know what I think works about this whole twist that he's the... Because obviously uh, Cassidy had already said that there was another killer. He didn't know who it was. Yeah. What I like about this is that season one, he was actually a suspect. There was a lot, a long time in season one where we thought he he could be one of the killers. You know, he's yeah. he's acting a bit unhinged, so it actually kind of makes sense. It's a shame that he had to kill Chamberlain at the end to make his point. Mm. You know, I don't miss him that much. I don't think. No, he's, I mean he's alright, but I, I I guess it's the kind of case of killing the people who aren't the really funny ones. That's the thing. It's like him and Zayde are the ones that. I like the next on my if they if someone's gonna die, let's just make it them. I wouldn't mind losing Cassidy, but he's one of the killers, I suppose that's Well yeah, that's what I mean. I mean I mean in terms of our core. Yeah, but the point is is we want to keep the the three Chanel's. We want the Chanel's, we want Dean Munch. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Everyone that's else. It. Yeah, everyone yeah. else. Yeah. Doctor Hole, I, I like the hand thing. Doctor Hole's pretty funny. I do. I, I also noticed someone pointed out uh to me, you know how he has all the hands arranged in his bedroom? Yeah, yeah. They, they they spell out in sign language. I knew rock. they spelled it. I didn't know yeah. what it was, but I knew they spelled it something. They just spell out his name. Is it his name? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I assumed it was something dirty, but that's. <laughs> I, I I'll be honest. I thought at first it was going to be something to do with Harvard. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see. But that. you know, they've they've pulled away from those jokes a little bit now. Yeah. Uh, even even Holtz, like, uh, yeah, I want to have an affair with you, man. No, no, I'm going to stay with Chanel, but I want to have an affair with you, like a long one, that last years. Yeah, yeah, and her going, what do I get out of it? It's like, well, this is obvious. You get both of them, this is what you want. And he just goes straight to it. You get double the pounding. She's like, yeah, I get double the pounding. Double the pounding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, she cracks me up so much. Um, I feel like I, I, seeing that I really, really enjoyed, actually. Speaking again about Zadie kind of finally coming out of her shell a little bit and actually having more of a character, I loved her luring in the killer with this, like, ridiculously tranquil bath setting with the petals and you know the silhouette you know the shadow in the wall of her undressing you know very sexy and sleek and then the killer like opens the curtain and she's like standing there almost like a ninja cat suit with a taser yeah it was cool the plan wasn't very well formulated I mean they got their asses handed to them immediately almost but they did fight him off and they did technically come away with what they aimed for also best like minor character ever is the uh, clothes shop guy, the material guy. Yes, I remember selling that in 1986 because I see your karate kid two came out and I got a handy in the theater. <laughs> I remember that one from a few months ago because I was at a, on a date at an Italian restaurant and I got a handy under the table. That one a few weeks ago, I don't recall any handies associated with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is how he remembers. See, yeah. The first one, though, where he said he got a hand in the theatre, I, I, that was the one where I really lost it because it was just out of nowhere. Like I was, yeah. not, I was not expecting him to say anything that ridiculous. It was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know what my problem with the plan in general was, though? Yeah, yeah I the plan. So, again, I'm bringing logic into this here, but her plan was to trap him enough so they could cut some of the fabric and hunt it down. 
just trap him. Tra- yeah, just, yeah, just, just, just unmask him. I also question Zadie's plan to just go to the, your main suspect's house alone with no backup. She tried. You wait. Like, she'll still oh, be yeah. here tomorrow. <laughs> that, that is a good point. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and she obviously she wakes up after being drunk. She's like, ah, oh, this again. Yeah, you, you probably bloody deserve it this time, to be honest. Yeah. Although, one thing in that scene that I really appreciated, a nice little touch, was when she's walking to the house, it goes very Halloween. Uh, there's this long shot of, like, from behind her walking towards the house, and the music that's playing sort of like a, you know, a constant, uh, what do you call it, pedal? Or yeah. inverted pedal on the, uh, I guess a synth, but, you know, it's very reminiscent of the, the pedal and the Halloween, the, the piano just going. Yeah. Uh, I liked that. That was good. Um, it was a very. It was just like a small ten, fifteen second thing, but it was very. Yeah, it was a bit of a pastiche, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it just reminded me a lot of that movie. Yeah. Just a little stylistic touch. I'm sure it was intentional. Oh, I'm sure it was. Uh, speaking of uh, music, uh, I, what song was it? Was playing. It was. It was during the love scene. I say love. Uh, attempted sex scene between Holt and Chanel, and it transitioned into the uh, the plan scene. Yeah. So this good eighties music. I remember keep th- there was a few times in this episode I was like, ah, oh, music choices are on point this this episode. Yeah. I can't remember any of them specifically now, though. <laughs> I think that's because they, they so often just use, like, really popular, typical 80s music that you just yeah. remember 80s music. You don't necessarily remember what the song was. Yeah. It was, it was good choices, and it always worked for the scene. I remember thinking that actively a few times. Yeah. But I just don't remember what they actually were. You can't say that one coin's better than any of the others. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Which, by the way, kind of by the way, this one. when Chamberlain found the, uh, you know, the, the hairball, if you will, that was inside them, which they thought was, was a tumour at first, obviously there was the receipt for the chainsaw and the, uh, machete. the machete, but one of the other things that he didn't pick up was a quarter. I know. <laughs> just, just like, like, like Craig Field. <laughs> just a subtle, again, subtle little visual joke. They don't even, you know, stop to dwell on you, just you see it and that, that is kind of what I love about the show. It is so over the top and ridiculous, but it has subtleties to it as well with its humour. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think obviously it takes a lot of liberty with plot and logic. You know, as as the character even said. Uh, Man, we're bringing this up a lot this time. Don't, don't, don't bring logic into this this conversation. I feel like this is. I know we're, we're kind of harping on about this, but it's so important that everyone complains about this show. I feel like because it's oh, why would this happen? And oh, I get, I hear people say that, and it's it, like, it's just really, shut up, just go with it. It's simple. It's a cartoon. Just accept that it's a cartoon yeah, and exactly. go with it. Because some of the jokes are actually really witty, and there is those little things there, like the coin just being there, um, like the sign language, you know, which you would only know if you if you look it up or you happen to know sign language what that yeah. says and so on, you know, so. I no, nah, uh, this was a solid episode. Probably one of the best of the last few, actually. So yeah, I think it is. So uh, we get two left, I believe, uh, over the next two weeks. So we'll see where things go. Obviously, we know who all the killers are now, and uh, it's funny how the other killers were completely absent in this episode. We kind of focused on uh, one thread here. So next Why week. Why you say that? I okay, mean... okay, the killer who attacked Zadie, and that could have been one of the other ones. Sure. Uh, what about? Attacking uh, Munch and Wes. That makes sense. That can't have been him. That makes sense that it's him, though, because he's jealous. Oh, because no, uh, he's in the scene. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's I'm, what I mean. He's I'm, there. I'm mixing it up. I was thinking, oh, must you're be... mixing up him and Holt. Yeah, aren't yeah, 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 which is funny because that's kind of what <laughs> Munch is. They're interchangeable. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that uh, one... Right. Okay, that has to be one of the other ones. I would guess that's well, it's either Cassidy or uh, Hoffle, isn't it? That or he's asked someone to do it to, to, you know, make him off the hook of looking like a suspect. Ah, uh, possibly. Because he's like, oh, I was there for an attack. So it gives him an alibi almost. Unless he's actually met up with like Hoffel between it, and we oh, find out they're in cahoots or something. I don't know. That's true. I did also like there where Dean Munch was like, no, let's stay and fight. And he's like, no, I've had surgery. I'm not pulling my stitches. I also like that she didn't really need him because we've seen her like fight off multiple killers at the same time before. Yeah, I wanted another one of those scenes to be honest. Yeah, she's she's a master. She doesn't need that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. Uh, no, it was a really solid episode. Lots of really good jokes, um, returning jokes, rapid fire, plot advancement. You know, genuinely surprised they brought back a character from season one. That I'm, is... I'm surprised they told us as much about Grace as they did. I genuinely thought we were never going to hear from her again. And yeah, it's like, oh, she's in a mental asylum. 
Yeah. Well, she leaves it open. She, if there is going to be a season three, she could pop back up again. She could. She yeah. could. I mean, if Zadie dies at the end of the season, we need the straight man again so they can bring, bring Grace back. We do. I'm not sure I want them to, but they could. Yeah. Although Zadie, Zadie is starting to come into her a little bit. I thought they gave her just enough character in this one that. That, that doesn't remember another one that cracked me up was uh, when he was giving that monologue to Chamberlain and going on about what was Royal Grace. And he's like, oh, you, you remember that, that feud between Katy Perry and Taylor Swift? <laughs> he's like, she said it with Katy. And Chamberlain looked horrified. <laughs> no. That was the part that cracked me up the most. Not just that that was such a big deal, the fact that he was so horrified by it. Oh, it was good. All right, that's uh, Scream Queens this week. A uh, really good episode. So let us know what you thought of it in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz. We'll see you next time.